Dear learners, welcome to Archem Tube. In this video, we will discuss effect of solvent on SN1 and SN2 reactions. Solvents are classified into polar solvents, non-polar solvents based on their polarity or dielectric constant. If the dielectric constant value is greater than 5, the solvent can be called as polar solvent. If it is less than 5, the solvent is called as non-polar solvent. Again, polar solvents are classified into protic solvents and aprotic solvents. In the case of protic solvents, we have NH and OH bonds and they can release H plus ions and also they can form hydrogen bonding and they can solvate both cations and anions and so they stabilize both cations and anions. In the case of aprotic solvents, they cannot form hydrogen bonding and also they do not have NH and OH bonds so they cannot uh, solvate nucleophile or negatively charged anion. They can only solvate cations. So they stabilize cations but not uh, anions or nucleophile. In the case of non-polar solvents, these solvents do not have NH and OH bonds. They cannot form hydrogen bonds and also they cannot solvate cations and anions. It means they cannot stabilize both cations and anions. Generally, polar and non-polar solvents can be distinguished by mixing with water. When you mix with water, if the solvent is mixed with water, then the solvent can be called as polar solvent. If it is not mixed with water, the solvent can be called as non-polar solvent. Here we have a list of non-polar solvents. Generally hydrocarbons, they can act as a non-polar solvent and also some ethers, diethyl ether 1,4, dioxane, these can act as a non-polar solvents and also chlorine derivatives, chloroform, carbon tetrachloride, these can also act as non-polar solvent. Here we have some polar solvents, polar protic solvents. Polar protic solvents have OH bonds or NH bonds. If you take water, alcohol or carboxylic acid, these solvents have OH bonds. So these solvents are polar protic solvents and ammonia or amines, primary amine, secondary amines, these solvents can act as a polar protic solvents. And the next one is polar aprotic solvents. In this case, you cannot find NH bond or OH bond, but these are highly polar. Suppose if you take ethyl acetate, this one is polar. But uh, this molecule or the solvent do not have, doesn't have uh, either NH or OH bonds and tetrahydrofuran and dichloromethane. Here, if you observe trichloromethane that, um, that is chloroform and uh, carbon tetrachloride, these are non-polar. But uh, dichloromethane, it is a polar aprotic, moderate polar aprotic solvent and acetone, NN dimethyl formamide and uh, acetonitrile, dimethyl sulfoxide, hexamethyl phosphoramide, HMPA. Okay, these solvents are polar aprotic solvents. The first two three solvents are moderately polar and uh, the next uh, acetone, DMF, uh, acetonitrile, DMSO, HMPA, these are highly polar aprotic solvents. If you take a non-polar solvent, nucleophile is not soluble in non-polar solvents. That's why non-polar solvents are not suitable for SN1 and also SN2 reactions. If you take a polar aprotic solvents, they solvate selectively cation, not anion, that is nucleophile. In this case, the nucleophile will not be solvated by the polar aprotic solvents. 
if we take uh, the if you take the cation this is the y plus is the cation x minus is the anion this is the nucleophile in presence of a polar aprotic solvent y plus ions will be surrounded by the solvent molecules polar aprotic solvent molecules here the interaction between y plus and uh, the polar aprotic solvent here we have taken acetone as a polar aprotic solvent there is a dipolar interaction between positively charged cation and uh, solvent molecules. If you take nucleophile or X minus, in this case, there is no interaction between solvent molecules and X minus. Even though the solvent has a partial positive charge on carbon, there is no interaction because here the oxygen has lone pair of electrons there is a repulsion between x minus and uh, oxygen with partial negative charge that's why there is no interaction between the positively charged carbon and uh, nucleophile so in case of polar aprotic solvents the cation will be stabilized and the nucleophile will not be solvated will not be stabilized here you can find uh, bay or naked nucleophile it's very free nucleophile it can easily attack on the electrophilic center that is the reaction center so for SN2 the attack of nucleophile is very crucial here since the nucleophile is very free to attack on the reaction center so polar aprotic solvents are suitable for SN2 type of reactions if you take polar protic solvents, these solvents can solvate both cations and anions. In this case, if you take SN2 reaction, if you use polar protic solvent, since the nucleophile is solvated by the polar protic solvent, the attacking nature of nucleophile or the reactivity of nucleophile will be decreased. So, polar protic solvents are not, not suitable for SN2 type of reactions. But it is suitable for SN1 type of reactions because polar protic solvents, they can form hydrogen bonds and they can easily solvate alkyl halides into carbocation. In SN1 type of reactions, formation of carbocation is very crucial. In presence of polar protic solvents, the formation of carbocation is very easy and also polar protic solvents can stabilize positively charged carbocation so in presence of uh, polar protic solvents the solvolysis step the sol the process the solvolysis process is very easy that's why polar protic solvents are suitable for sn1 type of reactions suppose if you take a uh, nucleophile the nucleophile is surrounded by the polar protic solvents. Here the interaction is hydrogen bonding between nucleophile and the polar protic solvent that is water. So here the X minus is not free. It is in case. So the attacking nature of nucleophile will be diminished in the presence of polar protic solvents. That's why this one is not suitable for uh, the polar protic solvents are not suitable for SN2 type of reactions. Suppose if you take a cation, these cations will be stabilized by polar protic solvents by dipole interactions. Here, Y plus is surrounded by water molecules and there is an interaction between Y plus and a negatively charged oxygen in the polar protic solvent that is H2O. So finally, you can conclude that polar aprotic solvents are suitable for SN2 type of reactions. Polar protic solvents are suitable for SN1 type of reactions. Let us take energy profile diagram. In the case of SN2, the energy profile diagram in aprotic solvent and uh, this is the energy profile diagram in protic solvents. You can observe in presence of protic solvent, 
the reagent that is nucleophile has less energy means it is stabilized due to solvol stabilized due to interaction between protic solvent and the nucleophile so in this case the activation energy for SN2 reaction is higher in presence of protic solvent when compared with the aprotic solvent. So, in presence of protic solvent, the rate of SN2 reaction will be decreased. And if you take SN1 reaction, in presence of protic solvent, the reagent, the nucleophile is stabilized and the transition state, first transition state is stabilized and carbocation is stabilized and also second transition state stabilized. In this case, all, all chemical species will be stabilized. And the activation energy for the reaction when you compare with a protic is very less. So in presence of protic solvents, the reactivity of SN1 reaction increases. Let us compare the reactivity of uh, SN, the reactivity of tertiary butyl bromide with OH- in different solvents. Let us take pure ethanol, the relative rate is 1. And 80% uh, is ethanol, 50% is ethanol and pure water. Means It means when you are adding more polar product solvent, polar product solvent with the high dielectric constant. If you take uh, ethanol, it has around 27, the electric constant is around 27. For, for water, it is around 78.5. So, when you add water to the ethanol, there is an increase in polarity of the solvent. So, when the polarity of the polar protic solvent increases, the rate of reaction increases tremendously. Here, I have given list of uh, polar protic solvents and the dielectric constant for water it is 78.5 formic acid it is 58 methanol 32.6 ethanol uh, 24.3 and ammonia 16.6 and acetic acid is 6 here the rate of sn1 reaction is directly proportional to the dielectric constant of the solvent or the polarity of the solvent as the polarity of the solvent increases, the rate of SN1 reaction increases. Let us take SN2 reaction. If you take a primary alkyl halide, it performs SN2 type of reaction. If you take CH3Br with NaI, there is a formation of CH3I. Okay, if you take a MeOH, methyl, methyl alcohol, it is a polar protic solvent, the relative rate is 1. When you replace polar protic solvent with the polar aprotic solvent, dimethyl formamide, there is a tremendous increase in rate of reaction, 10 to the power of 6, 6 times greater than the rate of SN2 reaction in DMF is a 10 to the power of 6 times greater than in methyl alcohol. So when you replace polar protic with polar protic there is a tremendous increase in rate of SN2 type of free action. And finally we can conclude that less polar protic solvents are not suitable for SN2 even though it is protic. Due to less polarity the nucleophiles will not be soluble. It's very difficult to soluble, uh, it's very difficult to uh, solvate nucleophile in uh, less polar aprotic solvents. And also in this case, uh, as in the case of SN2, there is no relation between polarity of aprotic solvent and the ra rate of SN2. In the case of SN1, the, as the polarity increases, rate of SN1 increases. But in the case of SN2, there is no such relation. And also, the nature of solvent can increase SN1 or SN2 type of uh, reaction. So the rate of reaction will be increased, but uh, the mechanism will not be altered by the nature of solvent. Suppose if you take a tertiary bromide, tertiary alkyl halide, 
it always perform as in one type of reaction whether it is polar protic or aprotic solvent but there is a increase or decrease in rate of reaction based on protic or aprotic nature of solvent in this case also if you take primary alkyl halide it always uh, exhibits sn2 type of reaction whether it is protic solvent or aprotic solvent it means there is no change in mechanism of uh, alkyl halide in presence of protic or aprotic solvents but there is a increase in rate of reaction of a particular type of reaction this is about effect of solvents on sn1 and sn2 type of reactions in next video we will discuss uh, the effect of nucleophile on sn1 and sn2 reaction thank you